Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Keisha. From the title of this video, I'm sure you guys can tell what this video is going to be about. I recently got my hands on the entire serum collection from Victorium. These products were gifted to me from Susan Yara. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a first impressions video. On my Instagram, I did do a little unboxing of these products just in case you guys haven't seen it. It is still saved in my highlights. So go ahead and check that out. And of course, I want to give a big thank you to Susan Yara and to Notorium for sending me these products to try. They're not actually available in Canada yet, so I'm going to be the first person to try them on Canadian soil. And um, that's really exciting to me. And I'm so humbled that you value my opinion. So thank you again. I have a lot of thoughts about the serum and the brand itself, so we don't want to waste any more time. Of course, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to click that button. And without further ado, let's get started. So this is the box that came to me. I'm just going to open it up so you guys can see what I saw. Here is the box on the inside. It does have their mission statement right here. Upon taking the boxes out of the actual packaging, I did notice that their mission statement, like everything they believe is right here on the bottom. So that's really cool as well. So first of all, the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. They're filled with tons of information about the brand, about the ingredient, and just how to use it all around the box. On the inside of the packaging, it also has a little guide of how to use each one of the products. So if you're someone who is new to skin care and you're not quite sure what exactly the ingredients will do for you this will get you started with a little comprehensive guide on how exactly to use each of these products and the ingredients so that's really helpful and I expected nothing less because Susan is always really thorough in her reviews and when she explains anything about the skin the other thing that came in the box is this little pamphlet right here and oh my god Notorium is such a mood just look at this it is absolutely mesmerizing. I love these photos. Once again, more information about the brand, about like what they stand for, so on and so forth. I actually wrote out a list of things that I wanna get into, so let's start off with the brand. So I'm just on their website right now, and let me just say, very elegantly done. I'm honestly getting some Paula's Choice vibes from this website, just because Paula's Choice, she also has the ingredient library. She also has like really comprehensive um, studies attached to each of the ingredients that she used, and I'm getting that vibe from here as well. That's absolutely beautiful. The brand prides themselves on being clean. When it comes to using the words clean or green or natural, there is really no basis for those claims because there is no actual standardized definition of what it actually means. So while they do use that to market their products, I do like how on their website, they do list exactly what they mean by that. They do say, just like I said, that there is no actual definition, but for them, clean means the seven principles that they have on their website. The first being biocompatibility, which essentially is just saying that they're formulated to work with your skin, with your pH, with your body, the way that your actual organ, your skin, works. The second is a really important point that I want to make. They say that they are not 100% natural brand. It says, we believe in the power of nature and we believe in the advancement of science. We believe that the best and safest formulas are realized when tapping into both worlds. And this is actually so true. Honestly, there's a bunch of fear mongering going on in the skincare industry when it comes to ingredients and synthetic ingredients that are used in products because you know people want to make sure that they're using things that don't contain chemicals. But if you really think about it, everything is a chemical. Water is a chemical. To be honest, there is actually more chemicals in a banana than there are in hyaluronic acid. And I mean, poison ivy is natural, but I'm not going to be slathering that all over my face. That's just not going to help anybody. And these synthetic ingredients are created in a lab by scientists because studies have shown that certain types of delivery methods give you the best results in your skin. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, we believe in transparency, which is why they have their ingredient glossary. I am a skincare nerd, so whenever I see ingredient lists and studies, I get really excited. I don't have a background in like aesthetics or um, dermatology or anything, but for me, I, I just love reading this stuff. It makes me really happy. So I love that they have that on the website as well. Notorium really tries to be as user-friendly and eco-friendly as possible. And I really loved reading about kind of how their packaging is made. They come with glass bottles. The actual packaging, when you get the product that keeps the product in the box, is actually biodegradable. 
Um, the actual packaging that comes in the box to keep your products safe are actually biodegradable. So rather than using styrofoam, 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 oh my god, I can't talk. Um, they're made from cornstarch, so they actually dissolve when you put them underwater. So a few things to point out, they pride themselves on being cruelty-free, paraben-free, vegan-friendly, gluten-free, skin-compatible, fragrance-free, and dermatologist tested. They actually also state that all of our products are vegan except for our quadruple hyaluronic acid serum with 5%, which contains ethically sourced honey. So it's really good that they mentioned that as well. I think that's very um, honest and, and um, I respect that. Um, they also have a lab journal. So this is kind of like a little blog. So if you really aren't sure which one you should be using or why you should be using, they do have that little blog there to help you out as well. So I think that's really handy. So this is what all of their serum packaging looks like. It comes in these glass dropper bottles. I love that they're white and not see-through or clear because it protects it from the lights. And then this is what the dropper bottle looks like here. And each of these bottles come with one fluid ounce of product or 30 milliliters. Let's move on to the formulas. I do find the formulations quite interesting because they feature something called encapsulation. This is a fairly new um, term in the skincare world, but it basically means that the delivery method of some of these highly active ingredients are a little bit easier because they're encapsulated in something that will just make your skin respond better to it. And that is really important because the percentages of some of their serums are actually pretty high. Like for example, this vitamin C serum is at 22%. You do wanna make sure that you're between 10 and 20. 22 is like even higher. It's the extra mile that's there. So that's really interesting that she chose something so high. Now for the fun part, I'm gonna go through the serums and just talk a little bit about my first impressions about them uh, individually. So let's start off with the vitamin C 22%. Um, this one actually states that it has hyaluronic acid Acid and vitamin E inside of it as well. This product does contain L ascorbic acid, which is the most effective form of vitamin C. With the encapsulation, it's supposed to be less irritating on your skin. This one, it does state that it's encapsulated with gold. So I'm interested to see how that's going to work on the skin. They do also state that it has a non irritating pH level of 5.30 to 6.40. We'll see with all the encapsulation and, and everything in it um, how much of an effect that will have on your skin. I've heard great things about it, but I'm excited to try it for a, a consistent period of time. The ingredients themselves, the first is water, of course, glycerin, so it's hydrating to your skin. Then we have sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is the first of vitamin C that they have in it. This is a lesser potent vitamin C, which is based on the ingredient list, going to be a little bit more saturated than the ascorbic acid. Reading through the ingredient, they have a, a couple of extracts in it which is different from fragrance so that's not you know too alarming they have aloe vera so it's gonna be a little soothing this would be one of the serums that i would prefer in a pump bottle so on their website they do actually have the pump head which you can purchase for four usd i believe um so about seven dollars canadian if you do want to change it to a pump but you have the option Okay, since we're already talking about vitamin C, let's go on to the second one, which is the vitamin C Super Serum Plus. So this one I'm actually most excited to try because it's like a little cocktail. Um, this one features the vitamin C, retinol, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and salicylic acid. They do state it has a pH of 5.5 to 6.50, so that's really good for your skin itself. In terms of the ingredients, we first have water. Then we have niacinamide. So really interesting that that is the most potent ingredient in the product, niacinamide. We have glycerin, so gonna be more hydrating to your skin. Then we have uh, ascorbic acid as the vitamin C. So I love to see that. Then we have the gold encapsulation. And then we have something called retinyl palmitate, which I actually didn't know what it was, so I had to Google it. And it's basically a less potent version of retinol that has palmitic acid, which is a fatty acid. And fatty acids are good for like replenishing the skin barrier. So it's supposed to help the retinol not disrupt the natural oil production um, on your skin. So that's exciting. So looking over the ingredients, I think that's the only retinol that they've used in this product specifically. So you're going to get most of the niacinamide and the ascorbic acid, a little bit less of the retinol from it. So according to the website, you can actually use this in the morning and in the night. So, um, which makes sense because the retinol is not as harsh. 
And then for the rest of the ingredients, they have the salicylic acid, they have aloe as well, so you're gonna get a lot of hydration from this. So this one's supposed to be a day and nighttime serum that you can use to help replenish your skin, protect it from the environment, as well as repair your skin with the retinol. So that is super interesting for me, and especially someone with combination skin because it has a salicylic acid, that's gonna help with that too. So this is a beautiful concoction, and I cannot wait to try this for a longer period of time. But, and there's always a but, the only thing, um, this actual concoction does not state the percentage of niacinamide, vitamin C, and retinol in the product. Now Susan did say that the this one is just so power packed that she didn't really feel the need of adding it, but personally I would like to know. Um, it looks like niacinamide would be the highest, like I said, but I would love to know what exactly the percentage of this is so that we can know how effective it is. You know, in her video, she always does say that it's important to know what the percentage of your product is. And even I looked back at her actual vitamin C video that she featured the vitamin C in. She once again stated that it's important to know what percentage is in the product. I would still personally love to know just from my inner nerd. But yeah, the next product is the Retinol Serum 2.5%. And this is what it looks like here. So this is another one that I'm really excited to try because... I used retinol in the past, but it was so potent that it absolutely did not agree with my skin. Um, so this one is actually an even higher percentage than that one was. That was retinol 1%. This is retinol 2.5%. So I'm interested to see how that's going to react to my skin. This one does also have the same hyaluronic acid and the vitamin E. This one has a pH of 5.5 to 6.0. Just understanding the way that this is formulated, they do state that there's two types of retinols in here. That combination is going to help with the ease of use without getting any type of like serious purging spells. So, so in their ingredients, they have water as the first ingredient. Then going down, we have retinol. See, there's the actual version of the retinol. Then we have the retinol palmitate. Like I said, it's going to help with the um, oil production of your skin. And also that would really help because retinol is really drying. So it's nice that they have that included. Then they have something called Bacuchiel, which is one of the newer ingredients. So this is actually a plant alternative to retinol, which they found this plant has similar um, effects on your skin as retinol does without the irritating effects. So this combination of the three types of retinol and alternatives that they have that is actually really beautiful and I'm excited to try this one here. Just from my patch test that I have here on my arm, this one actually absorbs so quickly into the skin while the others kind of left like a nice coating on top so you get that hydration. This one just soaked in. It didn't make my skin dry or itchy or anything and I don't have any type of irritation from the three which was the vitamin C, the C plus, and the retinol. No irritation from it but this one really absorbed super quick. So the hyaluronic acid and the vitamin E in this particular product I think is really necessary because it does help to not dry out the skin. The next product that we have is another one that I'm really excited about. This is the Quadruple Hyaluronic Acid Serum 5%. And this one has pure hyaluronic acid and four molecular weight levels. So I find this really interesting because um, these different weights of the molecules allow it to penetrate the different layers of your skin. Rather than just saying on the surface, you have heavier molecules that will seep down to the deeper layers of the skin. So I think that's really interesting. Okay, so this will really help the hydration seep into the deeper layers of the skin and just maximize the amount of water content that you can get in your skin cells. In terms of the ingredients, we have the water, then we have the hyaluronic acid, like they said. This also has honey. Um, as we mentioned previously. Then they have phospholipids, which is another fatty acid that's gonna help with the skin barrier and the natural oil secretion that you have on your skin. So really love that too. From what I can see here, this product also has vitamin C in it. They have something called tetrahexidel, I, I can't pronounce that, ascorbate, and that is a more stable version of vitamin C. So this will still be brightening to your skin. Um, very, very interesting that that's there as well. Then they have apricot, which is gonna help to moisturize the skin. Now, apricot oil can be a little pore clogging for certain skin types, like myself, if you have oily skin, a combination skin, or even acne prone skin. So this will be perfect for dry skin types, I'm sure. But interestingly enough, on their website, they do see that this is okay for acne skin, as well as um, sensitive skin, and combination skin. So really interested to see what's gonna happen with this one. Immediately, I do find that it 
is really moisturizing. Out of the serums, I would say this one takes the longest to soak into the skin, which makes sense because it's so packed with all those hydrating and moisturizing ingredients. Something like this will be really perfect for the winter. Um, now that it is summer, my skin tends to get a little bit more oily, so we'll see how this works for us. The next serum is the Niacinamide Serum 12% plus Zinc 2%. And this one says that it also has hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. Niacinamide, I've always said, is one of my favorite ingredients. I love this thing because it does just so much for the skin. Um, and then the zinc as well because that's really good for acne. Now from the name, it is very similar to the one from The Ordinary. That one has 10% niacinamide and 1% zinc. And I guess they just wanted to give it a little bit more to give it a boost. Now with niacinamide, 10% is pretty much all that you need. So once again, interesting that she just added like a two to every type of um, ingredient that she used. With the vitamin C, it's 22% and the niacinamide is 2% and zinc 2%. I think that's interesting. It's like a little bit of a, something extra, a little boost. So this one has a pH level of 5.0 to 5.60. Very nice. And then in the ingredients, water, then niacinamide. It also has the zinc, like we said, and glycerin. This one also has a little bit of dimethicone, so you're going to get some of that texturizing in here as well. The niacinamide, I believe, has the shortest ingredient list of the serums, and the vitamin E is about ninth down on the list, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem on your skin. Once again, if you do get irritation from any of these products or any other products, you know, just patch test and, and stop if you get that irritation, right? Okay, so those are for the serums, and now we're going to go into the oils. So Notorium has two face oils currently. This is the Plant Squalane Face Oil 100% and then this one is the Virgin Marula Oil 100%. And personally these are two of my favorite oils because they are just so good and light especially for someone like me who has acne prone skin as well as combination skin this one helps to balance the oil production in your skin and it also has anti-inflammatory properties so it'll be really good for anyone with acne skin as well as eczema so really really do love this and it is of course a powerful anti-aging oil too their one of course contains just 100 squalane and even on the ingredient list the only thing listed is squalane so that's good to see as well for these oils they also do have like the how-to guide so you can really go through which one may be suitable for you personally i would use this one in the morning now I've already started using this one and I think it's really, really light on the skin. It absorbs quite quickly and it doesn't leave any type of stickiness. So that's something that I love. And with this, um, I just put it after my cream, after whatever lotion I put on, I put one drop of this on either side, so two drops, and then I just kind of moisturize that in my skin. So I also do have the Ordinary's version of both the Squalane and the Marula Oil, so if you guys want a comparison between the two, I will definitely make a video on that once I've used them a little bit more. And the last product, of course, is the Virgin Marula Face Oil 100%. This has unrefined organic marula oil. This one I find is a little bit thicker than the squalane oil but still light nonetheless. Um, it's high in antioxidants and fatty acids so once again it's going to repair the actual moisture barrier of your skin as well as the oil production. So this one's going to really give you that bounce to your skin and make it feel really supple and moisturized. So love this one too. For me personally I use this in the night but you can use it both in the morning and the night if you'd like. Once again one drop on either side and then I just pat it into my skin or you can actually put the two drops in your hand pat them together and then pat it on your face whichever one you prefer and of course the ingredient list just lists the actual um, rule oil these two types of oils are some of the most compatible oils on the market in my opinion the reason being because it just suits every single skin type so I really love the fact that these two my favorite oils are included in Notorium's line. Those are all the positives. Let me talk about some of the things that are a little bit to me, okay? You guys know that I am a, such a huge fan of Susan Yara, but I do want to make sure that I'm approaching these from a very analytical perspective rather than just being um, blinded by the fact that they are Susan's. I'm sure that's the type of feedback that she's looking for too. So um, a few things that I want to note on. Now there are some reoccurring ingredients, namely the hyaluronic acid, the niacinamide, as well as the vitamin E, which I've said before, some of the ingredients, namely the vitamin E, can be a little bit sensitizing to some people. So it's really interesting that she included it into every single product. We have, yeah, hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, this one as well. We have the same thing, every single one of them. Okay, hold on. 
This one, hold on, the Super C may not have it. Let me just go back to the ingredient list. No, it does. It has toco tocopherol acetate, which is vitamin E. Every single product in this line has vitamin E and hyaluronic acid. These two, when it's used so frequently and so often, it can be a little sensitizing to the skin. So it's just interesting that it's been repeated so much. So with that being said, these products are not designed to be used together every single day. You do not need to apply two vitamin Cs or two retinols. You don't need to do all of that. So um, if you just would pretty much be using them one at a time but just be mindful if you're using for example the hyaluronic acid and the niacinamide be careful because the vitamin c also has niacinamide in it so things like that you may want to be a little mindful of the vitamin E is most likely used for its antioxidant properties to protect your skin from the environmental factors, the free radicals that damage our skin, and you need something like this to help rebuild it. So that makes sense. The hyaluronic acid as well, just to make sure that some of the more drying ingredients like retinol don't dry out your skin. So they have their place, but just be mindful that every single one of them has that in there. And the niacin might as well. Um, um, also to note, like we said with this, um, hyaluronic acid, it does still have a little bit of vitamin C in it. So be mindful when you're pairing it with your vitamin C serum or if you're pairing it with the other one. The most expensive product is about 25 USD. In Canadian, that's about $34. So um, I don't think that that's too expensive. I think it's pretty affordable for a lot of people. At the end of the day, if you were to purchase a serum, a moisturizer, a cleanser, and an oil, this would cost you about $100. So I think that's a good bang for your buck. They also are one fluid ounces for the serum specifically. So pretty good size as well for the price. I'm going to be testing each and every one of these serums over the next couple of months. So please let me know if you would prefer to see one large video where I'm doing comparisons, reviews, all that kind of stuff all in one. Or would you like to see mini videos because I'm using them kind of one at a time. So as I'm finished using one, would you like to see a comparison video with the ordinary that I have or inky list, so on and so forth because they're kind of around the same uh, thought process and types of products. I'm sure you guys can see with the percentages and everything there. So let me know which one you would prefer for. But basically what I'm looking forward to finding out is whether the retinols, the vitamin C being encapsulated would be irritating to my skin. Like I said, I've had had reactions to vitamin C and retinol in the past. So looking forward to see what that's going to do. Um, and also with the encapsulation, how effective the retinol and the vitamin C will be. Because we went through the ingredient list, a lot of them are alternatives or um, lesser potent less potent versions of the actual active ingredient. So looking to see whether that's going to make such a big difference, whether it will take a long time to make a difference, I don't know, we'll see. Number two, I'm looking forward to see whether the vitamin E and the hyaluronic acid the two repeating ingredients in pretty much every single one of these will be sensitizing to my skin or whether my skin will be able to tolerate it. As someone with acne prone skin, I've been sharing with you guys my journey for such a long time. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have similar skin to me if you're following me. So that would be really interesting to, to know and, and I'd be excited to share that with you guys. Dark spots, that is another thing that we are trying to combat. So we'll see if the retinol, the vitamin C have an effect on that. Um, the overall experience of using it, whether it's going to uh, change my life, whether my texture will change, just how I feel about the product itself and the brand, whether it's worth the price. Like I said, there are products out there from DCM, uh, Noid, uh, The Ordinary, stuff from that family as well as inculus that are similar products at different price points so whether it's worth you know going the extra mile with these that are so beautifully formulated for my opinion or something um, that is more just you get what you pay for type of product but is it is it worth is it worth it but yeah those are the things that i'm looking forward to sharing with you guys so let me know what type of review videos you guys want to see i'd be super excited to do them for you and comment down below if you've ever tried them before are you waiting to get your hands on it let me know your thoughts as always go ahead and click over here to see some of my previous videos Stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye.